In this tutorial, you will learn how to set a custom mesh on top of vehicle using the Niagara Visual FX system. Hi, today we will build a system that allows us to put any car mesh we want on top of a vehicle. For this, we will use a custom car mesh and the Niagara Visual FX system additional to usual Fortnite devices. But let's start with the programming first. So I have my custom car device here defined and uh, for for this thing to work, uh, we need to define a couple of devices first. So we need we need a button to interact with the visuals of the custom car, a vehicle spawner to spawn the actual car, and then two visual effect devices. Additionally, we want to track the location of the spawn vehicle, so we'll have these two as well. With the game's start in the onBegin function, we need to track a couple of events. As I said, our car button will be used as the visual of the custom car and when the player gets into the car uh, they will be using that button so we need to listen to the button's interactive event then we also want to track the actual vehicle and when the player gets off the vehicle so we'll listen to the vehicle exit event and the vehicle spawn, spawn event as well Another thing we want to do is um, start the game with the vehicle spawner as disabled. Actually, this is not strictly necessary, but I would like to have it this way because we'll use the basic um, default functionality of the vehicle spawner. So instead of spawning and destroying the vehicle ourselves, we'll just enable and disable the spawner and it'll do the spawning and destroying for us. So just start uh, with the vehicle spawner being disabled. When the player interacts with the button to enter the car, which they will be interacting with the car visually in the game, first of all we need the button disabled because we don't want another visual of the car standing around while we are driving the car. So after the, the player interacts with the button, we want to disable it. And then we will set the car VFX on top of the agent. This will show the car visual on top of the player's character in the game world and essentially it will go wherever the player goes. And lastly, we want to spawn the actual vehicle and put the agent in the vehicle. Also, of course, the vehicle needs to be at the location of the player when it's spawned, so we need to teleport it.
Now you can see that I'm also spawning an async function that's additional to what I talked about. This is because enabling spawning and teleporting the vehicle spawner takes some time. So, uh, and the player might be put in the car at the car's old location. So before the car is actually teleported. So we'll just wait a little before, the, before doing that. For now, we just put the player into the car in the in the async function. We'll also do some other stuff at the else condition um, after the player exits the car, which will come to it in a minute. But before, remember that I said we want to track the location of the spawn vehicle. So when it is spawned, we'll set its reference to our optional variable. So what left is that we need to tidy every, everything up when the player exits the vehicle. So we need to disable the vehicle first of all, and then um, put the car button to the last location of the vehicle and enable it. Thus, the vehicle visual be, will be there for the player to interact and drive again. And then we will set an empty VFX on the agent so that the car VFX is gone. Again, we did a part other than the vehicle disabled, vehicle disabled code in the async function because we want to make sure these actually happen after the vehicle is disabled. And you can tweak these initial wait durations, I mean, if you want, you can fine tune them. And actually, the code is done. Now we need to create our visual effect. So a quick addition, um, something that I have forgot was to move the button after disabling it because even if you disable, it will be still visible. So we need to move it um, to some location which won't be visible. So I'm just moving it down like thousand units and so that it won't be visible and it's all right. We are going to teleport it back to the player's location when it gets out of the car. So what we need is uh, to set up a Niagara visual effect system where we where we'll emit the car me car mesh as particles. And since we, we want the car all to always be visible, we'll set the particle to loop indefinitely.
So on top of what I said previously, we also set some details like the rotation and scale. These values are specific to this mesh. You would want to set the Z rotation um, and the scale appropriate, appropriately to your own mesh that you have. But uh, the details that I've done about the uh, looping indefinitely and not killing the particle and adhering to the local uh, rotations, uh, that will be the same. Now, let's set the couple of devices we need and set their de references and then test it. So if you come to our vehicle here, which is, you know, just a button actually, a custom mesh we put on the button device, so we can interact with it and then we can drive it. <laughs> As you can see, there's an actual vehicle that the player is driving and on top of it, we have our vehicle visual, which is just a particle effect. So we can exit it and then <laughs> We have our button teleported again here and then we can get in and then we can drive again. Awesome. So thanks for watching, like, subscribe and share if you have enjoyed and also leave a comment on what tutorial you would want to see next. See you later.